enter the Holy of Holies. The Holy of Holies is an inner sacred place where God's presence dwells. It is a place where you can find God. You see, God's Holy Spirit lives, comes and dwells in all who have opened their hearts to Jesus Christ. God is not going to send his Holy Spirit to dwell in anybody, any temple that is crawling with wickedness and sin and just ways that are not of God. God's Holy Spirit will only come in to a body, to a temple that is free from sin, free from wickedness, free from evil doing. And as Jesus is the only one who came and took on the sins of the world, he came, he took on the sins of the world upon his own body. He put that body to death, which represents look and putting the sins to death. He resurrected on the third day, but the sins remain dead, which represents I have power over sin. I have put them to death, but I also have power over death because look, I'm resurrected. And then he went back to the father. In other words, those who open their hearts and welcome Jesus Christ into the heart, the truth of the reality that happened on the cross, which was I've put to death the sins of the world, that truth, that reality becomes alive in those who open their hearts to Jesus Christ. In other words, those who open their hearts to Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ comes to live in them with that truth, with that reality. In other words, now your temple, now your body is sin free. It's without sin. And so now the father looks at you and he sees a body. He sees a temple that is worth going to dwell in because that temple now is pure and holy because he sees the spirit of Jesus in you. He no longer sees those sins in you. Because remember, his, not, his spirit is not going to come and dwell in a body that's full of sin, that's full of corruption, that's full of evil doing. No, he's going to come and live in a body that is sin free. And when you accept Jesus Christ into your heart, since he is the only one that took away the sins of the world, that reality becomes alive in you. You see, that reality applies for everybody, but it only becomes alive in you when you actually open your heart and say, okay, come on in, dear Jesus. Now that reality becomes alive in you. So when the truth of a sin-free body is present, because of Jesus Christ, that's when God sends his Holy Spirit to come and dwell in this body, to come and dwell in this temple. Before that, God will not send his Holy Spirit to come and dwell in a body that is full of sin. And so without Jesus Christ in you, to clean away those sins in you, God's Spirit will not come to live in you. And that's just how it is. But after Jesus come in to live in you, God will send his Holy Spirit to come and live in you. The Holy Spirit will live in you and that will be the dwelling place. That will be the dwelling place. That will be where God resides. That will be the dwelling place of the very Spirit of God. You see, the Holy Spirit is the very Spirit of God. Is the very nature of God. It's God himself in the form of spirit. And so the holy of holies is God's dwelling place in you. The holy of holies is God's dwelling place in you. It is the inner sanctuary where you find God's presence. It is the place where you can go to find God, to sit in his presence to sit in his midst, to spend time with him, to commune with him, to speak with him, and uh, so on and so forth. You can dwell with God because Jesus made that possible. When Jesus went to the cross, just before he, after he dies, it says, and the curtains were ripped. The curtains in the Old Testament was uh, a place in the tabernacle where only the priest that could that was pure and holy mm -hmm. could enter that that the holy of holies of god got moved mm -hmm. uh, uh, can pass through that curtain to enter mm -hmm. the holy of holies of god nobody else could do that nobody else was pure enough mm -hmm. 
So God would choose one priest and they would have to be pure and holy to enter that place. But when Jesus died on the cross and it said, and the curtain rip, what does it represent? That curtain in the Old Testament was ripped. Now we don't need a priest to go and be that mediator between us and God. It says that curtain was ripped. Je through Jesus Christ coming to live in us, we have that direct connection with God now without that curtain being in the middle. For it says, and the curtain was ripped after the death of Jesus Christ. Let me, let me pause this to find where it is. Okay, so this is after Jesus' uh, uh, death. And it's in Matthew chapter 27, verse 51. It says, let me find a good version. And behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth shook and the rocks split. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks split. Matthew chapter 27 verse, verse 51. You see, in the Old Testament, there was that curtain. You couldn't, nobody could pass through that curtain into the Holy of Holies where the presence of God was. Because they were just too unclean, they were full of sin. And it would always be that one priest who had to be pure and holy, make sure he kept himself holy, who would pass through those curtains into the Holy of Holies of God, where God's presence was, only once a year. And that was... He would that priest would act as a mediator yeah. and that was to tell god you know forgive them and do some rituals i think you know forgive them mm -hmm. and then their sins will be wiped clean until next year again on the, the mm -hmm. be full of sins again but jesus the bible tells us mm -hmm. jesus is the only mediator you see when the bible tells us here in matthew that the curtains were torn jesus gave us direct access mm -hmm. to god but only through Jesus Christ being in our hearts. This is why Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No one gets to God the Father except through me. Because of Jesus, we have direct access to God now. Now, Jesus is the only mediator. The Bible tells us, for there is only one God and one mediator between man and God, and that mediator is Jesus Christ. It's no longer that priest anymore. This is why the curtains are torn. We no longer need a priest or anybody to be that mediator, that middleman between us and God. Because that's Jesus. Jesus is that mediator now in our hearts. So when Jesus it comes to live in our hearts, he becomes that person that connects us with God. So now God sends his Holy Spirit and we have direct access to God through Jesus Christ. Jesus is the our, our only uh, connection to God. So only then... Will the Holy Spirit come and live in us? God's God, God literally comes to dwell in us, and so the Holy of Holies. Now, after Jesus, is this inner sacred place where God's Spirit comes to dwell in us? It's a place where we can sit directly with God. It's a place where we can find God, His presence, thanks to Jesus Christ and thanks to the grace of God, because that's what it is. It's grace. The Bible tells us in 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, it says, For greater is he who is in me than he who is in this world. So greater is he who is in me. So God is in you. God is in us. Greater is he who is in me than he of any issue, any problem, anything of this world. It's telling us that God is in us. The Holy of Holies in the Old Testament was in the uh, the tabernacle but the holy of holies now with Jesus Christ is in us we are the temple of God now we are the tabernacle but you can only become that temple of God when Jesus Christ comes in and so after, I remember when I accepted Jesus Christ, which was two years ago, um, maybe a week or so before the year 2020, I accepted Jesus Christ. And I'm, I remember it took me roughly a year of just constant praying, constant praying, constantly reading the Bible, constantly seeking God, constantly, constantly, constantly. 
until I really understood that Holy of Holy, until I entered that presence, until I entered that Holy of Holy. And I understood what a privilege, what a privilege it is to enter this place, what a privilege, privilege it is to enter the Holy of Holies. I remember the first time I entered, I felt that I had entered this sacred place, because I did. It was so humbling. I remember the first time I entered, it was though I was walking on holy ground, because I was. I remember the majesty of God just being so prominent. I remember feeling the the grace of God. I remember feeling so privileged. I remember being, this place just made me so humble. I remember kind of doing, and it was through prayer. It was in prayer. I remember kind of my body taking this kind of posture because it's just, this, there was, it was like this force in this Holy of Holies that just humbles you instantly but you're so you're so happy to be in this humble state because you're so privileged just to be there and i remember having this inner knowing that you're in the you've you've entered the holy of holies and when i got out of prayer i remember asking myself did i just enter the holy of holies is it possible that I entered the Holy of Holies? Because that was the beginning stages anyway. And I was thinking, is that possible? I thought the Holy of Holies was like this tabernacle. I thought the Holy of Holies was like this tent thing in the Old Testament. It was in the Old Testament. But with Jesus Christ, you're that tabernacle, you're that. And I'm, I, oh my goodness, I entered the Holy of Holies. And which just reminds me, there's a song, you can find it on YouTube, and it's called Holy of Holies. It's a, it's a lovely song, Holy of Holies. I enter the Holy of Holies. I enter through the blood of the Lamb. Go and, go and listen to that. It's a, it's a beautiful song. And so I understood how privileged I was. And so, although the dwelling place of God of God's Holy Spirit is in you, the dwelling place of God's Holy Spirit is in you, uh, still it took a certain attitude of the heart, of my heart, for me to be able to enter that Holy of Holies. God's presence was there, but it took a certain attitude of the heart for me to be able to enter that Holy of Holies. It was, it was, it was just a place. But my eyes were closed and I was in prayer. But it was just a place where it was just me and God. I was in the, the dwelling place of God. I was before God. So much gentleness from God's side. So much love from God's side. So much mercy. So much forgiveness. So much kindness. So much goodness so much softness everything that God is it was all it, I was able to feel it all in one go it was a privilege it was a privilege so although the dwelling, the dwelling place of God is in us it took a certain attitude of the heart for me to be able to enter that the holy of holies it was an it, it, it took a certain attitude of the heart that it's all about god an attitude of the heart where i'm just seeking god with all my heart the bible says in jeremiah 29 13 god says you will seek me and you will find me when you seek me with all your heart it took a certain attitude of the heart where I was just seeking God with all my heart I just wanted to know God I just wanted I was just after God's heart I just wanted to love God I just wanted to know him more and more and more 
It was I, I my my will is God's will. All I'm after is the heart of God. It took this attitude of the heart. It was with passion and with depth and with truth. There was nothing superficial. Well, I want to know God and everything, but I'd rather sp I'm just going to spend some time on Netflix. It was none of that. It was just, I want to know God. I want to love God. I, I want to know, I want to experience his love. I want to be able to love like him. And that's why it says, you will know, you will seek me and you will find me when you seek me with all your heart. With all your heart. Not just with words. Not just a superficial prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And then it was, oh, what's going on there on Netflix? What's going on there on Facebook? God is primary. It's a heart that is oriented toward, toward God. Everything else is secondary. It's like God... And this is just an example, but I, this is, this this is, this was and still is the attitude of, of my heart. God, I don't know what plans you have for me, uh, but I want what you want. God, I don't know if my life is going to be uh, run smoothly. I don't know if it's going to have bumps. I don't know. I don't know none of that. I don't need to know. I just need to know. what I just want what you want for me. God, I don't know what is currently happening in my life. I don't need to know. I trust you. God, there's a current storm. There's a current uh, wave. There's adversity, difficulty, challenges in my life. I trust you. If that is your will for me right now, because there is something I need to mature in, there is something I need to grow in, there is something I need to learn, I'm happy to be here. And I'm going to praise God in the middle of the storm. Who was in the prison? Was it Paul? It was in the prison with the tra chains and there were the guards were, and they were praising. They were praising God. They were, or was it Timothy? I can't remember. They were praising God. They were praising God as they're sitting in this prison cell with the chains around their ankles, chains around their, their, their wrists. And the prison guard was saying to them, be quiet, be quiet. You know, stop this praising. Be quiet. I'm paraphrasing now. And the more they were shouting and praising God and praising God, praising God where? In the middle of the adversity, in the middle of the chains, in the middle of the challenge. They were still praising God, praising God. All of a sudden, suddenly, immediately, the chains just broken off, off them. The chains of their ankles, the chains from their wrists, supernaturally just, break, just breaking off them. It doesn't matter whatever adversity you're in, God. It doesn't matter what, I, what what adversity I'm in, the challenges I'm going through. I'm praising God in the middle of the storm. And as I'm praising God in the middle of the storm, these chains, these spiritual chains are being broken off me before my very eyes. Mm -hmm. And so seek God with all your heart. You will seek him and you will find him when you seek him with all your heart. And you will enter the Holy of Holies. Yes, he is dwelling in you. But this sacred place where you are stepping on holy ground. You will enter when the attitude of the heart is right. When the attitude of the heart is right. So although you have accepted Jesus Christ into your heart, you need a certain attitude of the heart. So when you accept Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ comes in and then God sees that sp the spirit of Jesus is in you. He sends his Holy Spirit. The, uh, the, the job of the Holy Spirit in the believer is to make you more and more and more and more like Jesus Christ every day, every day, every day. So, you've been, so you can become more and more holy, holy, holy. When you start to become more and more holy, 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 you can enter the Holy of Holies. Because a lot of people have welcomed Jesus Christ into their hearts, they've been saved, but they're still saying, you know, I don't want to let go of that anger, mm -hmm. I don't want to let go of that those drugs, I'm not ready. Mm -hmm. I don't want to let go of that jealousy, I don't want to mm -hmm. let go of that pride. You know, the job of the Holy Spirit is to every day convict mm -hmm. you, this is what is not of God, and then you've got free will mm -hmm. and to say, yeah. Throw that out. I don't want that. I want to be more like Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. You become more and more holy by the day. And I, I remember I told you in the beginning, when I accepted Jesus Christ, it took me about a year. I was constantly praying, constantly praying, God, make me like you. God, I want to be like you. God, I want what you want. Mm -hmm. Becoming more and more like Jesus Christ. Until one day I entered mm -hmm. prayer and I thought, what is this place? In my heart, I knew. Nobody told me. In my heart, I knew. 
This is the Holy of Holies. Mm -hmm. I became so quiet. Mm -hmm. I became so humble. I never, I didn't have anything to say anyway. Mm -hmm. What can you say to that? I had nothing to say. I didn't want to say anything. Mm -hmm. I was just, I was just in awe, like, God. Mm -hmm. He is this beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. He is, mm -hmm. he is this, this being that, mm -hmm. um, you have no words for that no words can explain that once you go into that his mm. his presence nothing has meaning anymore mm. nothing is of value anymore nothing exists mm. anymore mm. because everything you need every mm. not just everything you need everything everything is here Mm -hmm. It's found in the Spirit of God. Everything is here. Mm -hmm. I tell you, in my videos, a lot of people chase worldly things because they mm -hmm. want to fill in this emptiness in their heart, this empty void that can only be filled in by the one who created them, mm -hmm. God. And when you enter this Holy of Holies, everything is filled. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, everything else becomes non-existent. The... The, mm -hmm. the presence of God is so powerful to capture your attention mm -hmm. like this. You don't look to the left, you don't look to the right, you don't know mm -hmm. you don't know anything. You don't think anything. Mm -hmm. It's just God. Powerful. Mm -hmm. So although you accepted Jesus Christ, you need a certain attitude of the heart. And only through the Holy Spirit can you get that certain attitude of the heart. Because it's the Holy Spirit who every day is convicting you. This is what you're doing. It's not of God. Get rid of that. And then you have free will to say, yeah, I want to get rid of that. I want to be like Jesus. Mm -hmm. And it, get rid of that and embrace what is of Christ. Mm -hmm. Get rid of that. Embrace what is of Christ. So... Mm -hmm. Only the Holy Spirit can help you seek God to such a degree. You can't do it by yourself. Only the Holy Spirit can help you love God to such a degree. You can't do it by yourself. Mm -hmm. Only the Holy Spirit can help you want what God wants for you, not what you want. You can't do it by yourself. Because the heart is deceitful mm -hmm. above all things. Mm -hmm. Only the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. can take you by the hand. Create an attitude of the heart mm -hmm. that you may enter the Holy of Holies and sit in the midst of God. Mm -hmm. The midst of God. The Holy mm -hmm. of Holies. Mm -hmm. Book can be purchased below. Donations can mm -hmm. be made below. And send us your prayer requests using the email below. God bless you.